Part two of Celo theory for order 12 groups. The problem, we want to classify the isomorphism types of finite groups of order 12. Our key tool is the Celo theorems. Now, if we let n sub p be equal to the number of Celo p subgroups, p is a prime that divides the order of our group, then when the order of the group was equal to 12, we're able to narrow down n sub 2 to 1 or 3 and n sub 3 to 1 or 4. In the first part, we considered several cases. So when n sub 2 is equal to n sub 3 was equal to 1, we had that g is abelian, and then our g was then isomorphic to either z mod 2 cross z mod 6 or z mod 12. Then we noted if n sub 3 was equal to 4, we use the counting argument to show that n sub 2 is equal to 1. And then in this case, g was isomorphic to a4, the alternating group on four letters. For part two, we consider the remaining case, where n sub 3 is equal to 1, n sub 4 is equal to 3. When we have this condition, we'll have two isomorphism types. Now, the first one, probably familiar, we have D12, the symmetries of a regular hexagon. So this group has 12 elements. So if I pick a vertex, there's six possibilities for where we can send it. And then once we've chosen that vertex, there are two ways to orient. So we have 12 elements. Now, if we list the different types of elements that occur, okay, well first we have six rotations, including the identity. So we'll list each of those by their angle. That's going to form a Z mod 6. Then what's left over are going to be the six reflections. So you'll note we have six axes of reflection for a regular hexagon. Now, if we look at our chart, so here's the order of each group element. Here's the number of group elements of that order. And note I've split elements of order 2 into two pieces. We have no group elements of order four. The center is gonna be given by the identity and rotation by pi. And we note n sub three is equal to one. So if we take the identity and both elements of order three, that's gonna give us our unique Z mod three. To form a CLO2 subgroup, take the identity, rotation by pi, and any orthogonal pair of reflections. Now, if I have an axis of reflection for the regular hexagon, perpendicular direction will also be an axis of reflection. If we take a product of two such reflections, we get rotation by 180 degrees. So we're going to have three such pairs. That gives us three CLO2 subgroups, and they're all isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2. To work with this in a little bit, it's going to be useful to have a description of D12 in terms of generators and relations. So if I let y be equal to the reflection in the x-axis, I let x be the rotation by pi thirds counterclockwise, then we'll have y is of order 2, x is of order 6, and y x y inverse equals x inverse. So that completely describes D12. I'll leave that to you as an exercise. Now, our other isomorphism type, we're going to have what I'll call the semi-direct product of Z3 and Z4. So we'll just describe this in terms of generators and relations. So we're going to have an element X of order 3, an element Y of order 4, and we'll have Y, X, Y inverse equals X inverse. Now, it's a little bit of a workout, but you should verify okay, the following table. We're going to have two elements of order three, one element of order two, two elements of order six, and six elements of order four. The center is gonna be given by the identity element and y squared. You'll note, we only have enough elements of order three for a single CLO3 subgroup. So N3 is equal to one. And if you work it out, we're gonna have three 
CLO2 subgroups, each is of order four. Each contains an element of order four, so they're all isomorphic to Z mod four. Finally, we have elements of order six. So we're gonna have a unique subgroup, cyclic of order six, given as so. Interesting thing to note, if we compare D12 and our semi-direct product here, they both contain a Z6, and the remaining elements are all either of order two or all of order four. Let's show that these are the only two isomorphism types. First case, if our group has an element of order four, then the CLO2 subgroups are all isomorphic to Z mod four. We have a unique CLO3 subgroup, so it's normal. That means if we conjugate by any element in the group, it carries our CLO3 back to itself. So conjugating by an element of our group, it's gonna induce an automorphism of our CLO3 subgroup. On a restrict conjugation just to elements in one of our CLO2 subgroups. So that's gonna give me a homomorphism, call it pi, from our CLO2 to the automorphism group of our CLO3. Now the automorphism group of Z mod three has two elements. We can either send every element to itself, the identity map, or we send every element to its inverse. Now, if the kernel of this homomorphism is all of our CLO2, then what does that say? That says when I conjugate by any element in the CLO2 on any element in the CLO3, we just act by the identity map. So y x, y inverse is equal to x, or every element in our CLO3 commutes with every element in our CLO2. That means our group's abelian, it must be isomorphic to a Z mod 12. Now we can't have that because we're assuming that n sub two is equal to three. So that means I have to have a non-trivial homomorphism from Z mod four to Z mod two. So the kernel's gonna have to have two elements. One of our elements in our Z mod four is gonna have to map to this inverse automorphism. So that's gonna be an element of order four, okay, in our Z mod four, so I'll call that Y. And pi y on any element x in our z mod three is just gonna be equal to x inverse. That translates, using conjugation, y x y inverse equals x inverse. Okay, we'll pick some x in our z mod three. We've picked our y in z mod four. So I have the generators and relations for the semi-direct product of z mod three and z mod four as on the previous board. For the other case, where we have no group element of order four, the argument's gonna be essentially the same. So, we're gonna have a map from our CLO2, which is now Z2 cross Z2, into the automorphism group of the CLO3. We're gonna have to have that this homomorphism's non-trivial. So, we're gonna have to have some element in our CLO2 going to the inverse automorphism here. That's gonna be enough Okay, as you work your way through, okay, you'll see that you have enough to get the generators and relations for the D12, so the symmetries of the regular hexagon.